We're uh, down uh, uh, on the, uh, well, opposite the Vendée Marina in the Saab Delaine, and I'm actually here with Robin Davey. Voodoo, turn it around here. <laughs> so, um, Robin and Davey and I go back a long way. Hang on, I've got to get this right so I can see what's going on. And we're on his boat, um, which uh, was supposed to be doing this current uh, Golden Globe race, but it didn't quite make it on time. And we're going to go a quick walk through on his boat in a minute and um, have a good look around and, and uh, get some interesting ideas, and he'll show you what the plan was for for this race and the plan for the next race but in the meantime Robin good to be here with you again tell us a bit about you um, because every, a lot of people some people will know who you are and what you've done but a lot won't so uh, um, and I'll hold the mic you just talk away I'll, I'll hold that that's fine well I just you know got real lucky and went and did three BOC races so <laughs> back in the 1990s 1994 and 1998 so so we, we sailed together in 1998. That's right. And what was the boat you had then? I, I had global exposure then. It was a 40 foot um, production boat, a little bigger than this, but not much. So uh, it was a good boat. It, it got me around the world twice. Did, and did, did, did you have a sat nav then or a GPS? Do you it was, remember? It was sat nav then. A sat nav, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I had one of the early GPSs yeah, then. Yeah, 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 it was before so, GPS then. And we had to know how to do it with sextant in those days. That was your qualifier, right? Eh? Yeah, we had our sextants <laughs> and we qualified. We, you know, we, and, and actually had I'm to gonna, send our yeah, sights yeah. in to, uh, yep. uh, you know, to, to prove we could do it. To be approved. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so that was uh, that was a pretty exciting race going round. You and I got the Communicators Awards because we, we talked so much. But tell us about 1994. 90, 94 was Cornwall, it was the same boat. Um, I got dismasted in 1994, that was halfway between New Zealand and Cape Horn and uh, put up the jury rig and got to the Falklands and by the time I got to the Falklands they'd put uh, a, a replacement rig on the, on the aircraft and that arrived in the Falklands so uh, we re-rigged the boat, we were still in the race and we completed the race so that was good. That's fantastic. And then yeah, you decided to go yeah. for bigger and better. <laughs> what happened then? Well, I got I got real lucky and, you know, uh, got the pre-production test boat of the Bergstrom 50, which was a water ballasted, fast 50-footer. And it was just a fantastic boat. But we really struggled with finding the funding and getting to the race uh, start on time. Uh, so we were, you know, in some ways unprepared. We, we broke the rudder going down to Cape Town. So... That was 2,000 miles without a rudder. Okay, so you don't have to do the emergency steering test now. <laughs> Forget about the emergency I, I jury have, rig. I don't have to do the jury rig. I don't have to do the steering. Um, hey, that's how things go sometimes. So you, what you can be sure of for this race is I'm really paying attention to is my rig strong and is it going to break? And I don't believe it will. And I've put a lot of time into the rudder and the tiller and all those kind of attachments to make sure my rudder stays on. Yeah, okay, I've had a quick peek of the boat, it's great, I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, why a Rustler 36? That's the first thing. Um, you know, let's get step back 18 months or so ago when you decided to do it. I think you were taxi driving, was that right, in America or something? Well, I wasn't taxi driving, but I, I did, I was speaking, but having decided to do the race, I had to cancel all my not cancel but not take any more bookings for for speaking so i thought i was going to be uh getting a boat ready pretty much you know within two or three months well it took me actually over a year to sort my finances out so during that time i had to do a bit of uber driving that was an <laughs> eye-opener okay and then why the rustler 36 rustler 36 because it in some ways it's the closest boat to my 40 footer it's the same style of you know style but not in in the the the, the keel and the the rudder but uh, that kind of production boat that I knew I could do a lot of work on myself without any great problems and um, you know I could just put the time and effort in because I knew I wasn't running on a budget that would you know have a yard or uh, professional people doing the work for me so it was you know basically all going to have to be done myself so th this was and, and I wanted to have a boat that had the potential to be competitive and beat you know, John Luke well <laughs> of course I'd like to beat John Luke and John Luke you know with great humor said yes he would love to have the opportunity to beat me okay and so the deal is now that everyone may know about John Luke he in his refit he um, put a brand new mast on board uh, brand new sails 
all that sort of stuff and then after trials decided it was too tall and so he got rid of the new rig and uh, he's got a shorter rig on and uh, you bought the new rig <laughs> so that's why you're here <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm here right now to fit the new rig which is John Luke's old rig so yeah. it's a rig that's that really was prepared for the Southern Ocean it's a very strong stout uh, what I would call proper job rig insofar as that's a lot of what I've done to this boat is make it strong and stout uh, you know for the southern ocean that's that's what I've got with the rig you know something that's um, substantially reliable I believe okay so let's see let's see into the boat get in the cockpit as if you're going to do some winching and we'll show you some big differences here I think most of the people know Susie's boat and the first thing that you'll see is that the cockpit's been modified and I'll explain this it's all a production boat race but uh, what happened was so you can see he's got another Robin's built another deck uh, above the um, cockpit and you can see where the old winch pads are over there and um, that's where normally the Russell 36 winches are normally this is illegal you're not allowed to do this but but Robin's got a do you want to tell the story how it happened in, in one minute well I've, I, I do suffer from time to time from back problems um, and so leaning out over to get to winches uh, leaning out over to get to winches creates um, you know stresses in the back and so on and on all my previous boats I had built this kind of side deck so that I could bring the winches to a point where I can just yeah. stand right over so the winch. So how did you beat the rule? <laughs> how did I beat the rule? I said Don look I have a problem here and um, Don said yeah but it's against the rules you better ask the other competitors what they think about it yeah. and I proposed putting the side deck in in such a way that I could stand over my winches instead of lean out over and nobody raised an objection and yeah, they're all encouraging eh? well I mean I think John Luke was encouraging because he could see all the weight that was going on John Luke was thinking ha ah, Robin is putting on lots of weight on the boat this yeah. is very good so there you go so Robin the old fellow appealed to all the entrants you know I sent out all the emails and no one really complained and everyone said yeah what the hell go for it so there is a special exemption here so uh, any 22 entrants looking at this you can't do it <laughs> that's the first thing let's go up and have a look on deck and explain some of the things that uh, um, that are going on here cool Dodger this is everyone you everyone's seen different Dodger Dodgers. This one's pretty cool. It's one of the best looking ones. Tell me about the Dodger, uh, Robin. Well, I wanted a Dodger that was low enough to be able to bring my main sheet for the, uh, for the mainsail up on top of the Dodger so as to get it out of the cockpit. And it, so it had to be low. And I wanted something that really looked as though it belonged to the boat, as though it was part of the boat. It was not a, an addition. It was not something that was just stuck up there and bolted down. So yeah. we, we took the curves of the deck, we took the curves of the, of the coach roof and, and where and the windows are there. and all, the, all every curve on this Dodger is exactly the curves of the main yeah. coach roof of the boat. So it okay. looks as though it belongs. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, all the, there's a lot of stuff still to go on. You know, the boat's still, uh, all the deck gear down here has got to go on. Uh, what else can we say? This is the old mast. This is uh, deck stepped. There's the a deck step rig. Yeah, the mast, this is the, going. the mast is deck stepped, and Jean Luc's mast is uh, right through to the keel. So next week or the week after, we'll be taking this mast out, cutting a hole in the deck replacing the fitting down in the keel so the mast can go right down through to the bottom of the keel yeah cool okay um all right that's about it it's a pretty much just like a stripped out um rustler deck uh good chain plate blank offs there you know as in um as in uh to help stop leaking i know you've strengthened everything down below we, re we, we strengthened everything down below but we also put these welded these plates on so that we don't have leaks through the deck through the chain yeah. plates and things like yeah. that if there's one thing i really truly hate on a boat it's leaks <laughs> <laughs> yep too true okay all right so let's um uh, windows have been uh, taken out as well you've only got a couple of basic windows there so that's straightforward oh here's an interesting one okay the wind vane self steering gear what have you got and why I know what it is but other people might not know what I've got here is the monitor um, the monitor is the vane steer that I used in the 1990s for three races 
it didn't let me down then I don't expect it to let me down now and having sailed down from England with it it's doing exactly what it should do steer the boat yeah and same as Susie's got Susie's got a monitor same and, as uh, Susie uh, who else got a monitor I um, believe uh, uh, oh Ari's got one Ari's got a monitor um, oh, yeah. and he's doing well no he's, problems he's doing well he's a happy camper yeah, yeah. Um, I think Yuku's got a, a monitor as well uh, and you Uku, can, no, he's got a hydrovane. He's got and a, a hydrovane. A, a, sort of a hybrid, hybrid. Oh, he's got a monitor as well as the... He's got yeah, both. He's got, the, he's got right, both. He's got, Uku's got both, yeah. <laughs> he had the monitor. It was the original one that came with the boat with Lionel, and, and he was worried about it being a bit old, and, right. and then he wanted to, you know... Anyway, he's got a, got a hydrovane as well, he's and he's using both. the hydrovane. He's got both. Okay, so we'll jump down below and uh, have a look. Um, tell us about your cheap hatch here. <laughs> oh, yeah, this was a production hatch. Uh, not a production hatch, uh, a special hatch. It's the same hatch that Susie's got for her uh, uh, rustler, and it's just a terrific hatch. So instead of having boards and a sliding hatch, we've just got this one door set at four, you know, 45 yeah. degrees, so, so that you know, in a hurry, I can just close it, lock it, yeah. and that's it. It's yeah, cool. it's uh, a very Absolutely quick. Watertight. Um, and you're pretty snug down, snug in the cockpit under the dodger, eh? Yeah. But you haven't got a you haven't got a bunk out here. You can't sleep in the cockpit. No, no sli no sleeping on the job. <laughs> no sleeping on the job. Okay. So I've got my compass down here, um, plus Timo compass, and uh, okay. Here's here's basically my seat out here is is here under under the doghouse under the hatchway, so that I'm you know out of the sun. Um, a lot of the time when I'm when I'm actually sailing. Yeah, cool. All right, jump down below and we'll have a quick squeeze. So, all oh, very good. Okay, that was pretty painless. Coming down, uh, where do we start? This is pretty good. This reminds me of Matessia's bunk. This one. <laughs> so uh, I'll just give them a quick scan through. There's a a big bunk there. Here we go, there's settees there, and this is the galley, and this is the engine down the bottom, and that hatches a watertight bulkhead going through the back, chart table just here, and uh, let's just start talking about this whole thing with an aft watertight bulkhead. That's pretty cool. What do you, yeah. what, what's going on here? Well, my my big thing, you know, is you can to, sit on the seat. And yeah, you can my sit. my big thing is to is to sub sub subdivide the boat into small compartments watertight compartments and it's a safety thing from my point of view yeah. we we had a, a, a hatchway back here and watertight bulkhead in the boc races in the 1990s yeah, that was mandatory then eh? they were mandatory then and uh it, it makes to my mind it makes for a very safe boat and as yeah. i've always said it's it's all about structure and safety um, so you know, we, we, I guess we're adding weight, and, and we certainly added a lot of work to uh, make a watertight bulkhead back here. But it's, it, I think it'll be, you know, well worth it. So yeah, and explain the rules for twenty two. You're not allowed to modify the interior much at all unless it refers to a watertight bulkhead. So when you make the decision to put a bulkhead through the back here, you can actually, you know, modify the production boat fit out if you if you know what I mean. The same up forward. So. I'll just go into that. You'll see in a minute, he's got a crash bulkhead up forward right on the stem, then another watertight bulkhead back from that, and then this this uh, main bulkhead here between the forecastle and the saloon is also becoming a watertight bulkhead, so therefore that can all be modified up forward. So um, so that's a quick one there. And even then, uh, we won't worry about pulling it apart, but there's a brand new Beta 30 horsepower diesel in there. In the engine, in the engine compartment, compartment, yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, and, and so that's going to be sealed up watertight, so the engine is... This, all of this becomes watertight, everything around here and you know you could go the other side of it and you can actually go around all everything that joins anything and it's all watertight. Yeah so it's a big safety feature and then you've got a pretty cool little galley there looking very tidy. We've got a nice galley and uh, all I need is two burners, I don't even need the grill. Um, but basically a lot of my food will go in into those compartments my pans and you know it, it it's it's easy and, and straightforward to use yeah. okay so head down to the saloon now oh hang on we'll talk about this bunk <laughs> what's the deal with the bunk oh the bunk's good that's the bunk with wings yeah I, 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 I really put very high value on being able to sleep and sleep comfortably 
and when you're over at an angle then you've got a, a, a the, the the side of the wings that you can you know roll up onto and, yeah. and it makes for very comfortable sleeping. So you've got a whole central partition bulkhead. So the standard layout is still there. The standard settee is underneath. The it's just this addition here. And, and then even, I've added to it. That's yeah, right. and even on this side with the boxes, the standard settee is there. You've just built it up a bit and put put bigger boxes on it. Right, and the reason, the reason for the boxes is that's where all my grab bags will go, my safety gear, my flares, everything that's going to go in a life raft with me uh, will all, we'll all be stowed there ready to go. So... So does that mean when you lost your rig in the second BOC in the middle of the Southern Ocean heading towards Cape Horn, you thought you might need your gear in a hurry? <laughs> <laughs> when I lost the rig, I no, I didn't really because you know we, we the, the the rig didn't hold the, the hold the hull or anything like that. I cut it away; it sank to the bottom of the ocean. So. Yeah. I was perfectly safe. I just had to then work out what to do with my two spinnaker poles to make a jury rig. So it worked then. I've read the article. Tell us a bit about it. It worked real well. Yeah. Um, we put up, you know, uh, 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 two spinnaker poles to make a jury rig and just kept going. And I had some terrific days runs. I had a, I had one day that I got 165 miles out of the boat <laughs> in 24 hours. That's pretty good. With a jury rig. I send all the entrants that, that article. Uh, and when they're talking about juries, they were saying, what, we've got to take the mast out? And I say, yep, have a read of this. And I send them all, all your thing. And uh, yeah, interesting. Hopefully no one will ever have to use them. But uh, And Susie lost one of her poles as well now. So well, that's interesting. She's still got a, a one pole and she's got a... Um a boom hopefully she'll yeah, yeah. Uh, you know if if, if, she if, if everything got got well, you know got bad and the mast came down hopefully she'll get that boom off the, off the mast and use that as part yeah, of her jury absolutely. rig okay let's let's go forward a bit and explain mm -hmm. a couple of things with the uh with here's an uh, interesting one don oh, yeah there's a double sextant that? rack well i think hey? it's very important to have a good place for the sextant absolutely so there we go yep perfect yeah so you've had that one for a while Actually, well, I had a sextant exactly like this um, back in the you know late seventies, yeah. and used it right up into the BOC years. Yeah. And then when I sold the Cornwall boat, I sold the sextant. The sextant came as part of it. He wanted to buy everything, oh, okay. and I said, "Yeah, that's fine. You know, if yeah. if that's what makes the difference, this is a sextant There's that's a been around the world, there as well. and I want a spare sextant yeah. there." Cool. What do you do with the boat? The guy who bought it. What did he do with the boat? He thought he was going to do a BOC, but he ended up doing an O-Star, and then oh, right. he, he converted it back into a cruising boat. Perfect, perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. let's look up the sharp end, see what's going on. Right, up in the sharp end here. Yep. Uh, bait, sail bins. Yep. The sails live behind these nettings. Yep. Um, this, as I said, will be a water-type bulkhead where yep. uh, there. Yep. Um, but when we looked at the chain plates earlier, I increased the size of these webs and the glassing of these webs and the length and a number of bolts that are bolting down the, the, the chain plates. Yep. So, um, yeah, quite massive, eh? Yeah, they're pretty, they're, not they're, going pretty, anywhere. they're pretty big and stout now, yep, yep. which is very important to me. I, I certainly did a lot of glass work on the, the, the join of the hull and deck underneath. Yeah, it's completely um, glassed over all the nuts and bolts. The whole thing here yep. is glassed over. A, it's to, so I don't have leaks, leaks yep. come up again. But B, it's, it, it really makes the, the, the deck structurally part of the hull. And you know, I, yeah. I, 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 I know what's going on down there. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it, the boats take a hammering. Yep. Yep, exactly. So this is another deal with, uh, we encourage water type bulkheads. It's not for everyone. They, some people have got a perfectly normal production cruising boat, but once they've done this, there's the collision bulkhead up forward. Plus then this second bulkhead here, that, that one there. Yep. Um, so one, two, one up there. This is the second one. The third one is where Don is here. Yep. So, yeah, so that means basically then you can strip it, you can gut this. There's no furniture in here at all, like the typical beautiful rustler uh, furniture. And, uh, you know, it saves a bit of weight, but the bulkheads cost weight. They're quite heavy to make. Um, so that's how you can do that if, if you're up for that. Um, but, yeah, very organised, eh? Reminds me of a mini BOC boat. <laughs> well, it, it is a mini BOC boat. That's, that's where I come from. Yeah, perfect. So uh, very functional filler, that water tank or fuel tank. This, this is the filler this, right this by is, the middle bulkhead. This there. is the, this is the fuel tank. Yeah. Reason I've got the fuel in here, 
to fill from in here is that I can't get any salt water, yeah, you know, exactly. fillers on deck, salt water goes in them. Yeah. So my water filler is there. Yeah, there's the water here, there. Here the we have there. a water filler here. Yeah. So water's filled from in here. Yeah. The diesel is filled from in here. Yeah. And uh, touch wood, hopefully I'm not going to get water, you know, salt water Look in my that. fuel. You're going to have four years of cassette music. And here's... <laughs> waiting for 22 yeah no here we go look we've got it we've got to have the cassettes we've got to have the tapes and um you know i've got about two or three hundred tapes to come on board yeah <laughs> oh jeepers okay i've Sounds got some cool. good i've got some good sounds okay all right and uh you can see here really solid uh deckhead uh, that'll end up with a headliner on it all the headlines got to be on this will yeah. have a headliner it's, yeah. we haven't got round to doing that yet but it's yeah. it's 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 to be done yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, anything else you want to tell me about the boat? Well, I don't know. What else is the... Okay. Uh, so you're uh, excited about being race number three, but first entry in the 2022 race? I am... Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not... I'm not I'm, no, I'm not excited, but I am. You know what I mean? I... Four years to, you know, is a long time to go yet, but that gives me a lot of time to prepare, to prepare properly hopefully to prepare as well as Jean-Luc has prepared and so on. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And, you know, basically I'm excited. You're certainly ahead of the game. <laughs> That's the good news. I mean, it's sad to miss out. You know, I know, we were, I we're know. all a bit gutted when you didn't get there, but we knew what you went through well, in the last of the three BOCs. And, you know, uh, yeah. We, we, we didn't need to be behind the, uh, you know, behind the game. We need to... Yeah, you know, yeah. to yeah, exactly. We need to come with a good boat. All right. And, and you're going to see this when you look at the, you know, what's going on out there right now, you know, is um, the, the best prepared people are sailing good races and yeah. the people who didn't have the time to really do the trials and find out what does and doesn't work are, are, are the people that are struggling with problems. Yeah, and exactly. In fact, we just, just to sign and wrap this up, we actually just had a call a couple of hours ago from um, from Tapio. Uh, he's having all sorts of uh, problems, little issues on the boat. Uh, I think everyone following him knows he's got problems with electrical and the engine's not starting. And uh, now it means his solar panels and the hydro and the hydro generator, the water generator, is, is uh, playing up as well. So he's having to rethink very hard about what he's going to do. Um, he knows he could actually sail around the world without any electricals at all. And and we've expressed an opinion that we would like him to be able to at least manage a satellite text message every day, uh, you know, because we've got a safety cover and also that gives us one satellite position every day to uh, tell us where he is and keeps in contact. Um, so he's got some big decisions now to decide whether he carries on or goes into Cape Town. Anyway, we'll talk about that later on, but you're right, it's all about planning, preparation, execution, eh? And uh, but at the same time, I will say in Tapio's case, I mean, we love the guy a lot. He's just a true gentleman, fantastic boat, fantastic campaign. And sometimes, and you've done this, <laughs> best to go with what you got and not go at all and give it a try, you know. So uh, it's one of those balancing acts, eh? Well, it is. A, it is a balancing act, and for Tapio, you know, it. it if he had had a, an extra month or so or a couple of months to try everything out and to work on the electrics and get them right and to work on the engine and get it right and so on you know he 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 would be in good shape and that's that's kind of the position i was in 1998 where you know we were so hurried getting to the start line we got to the start line and then basically we were rebuilding the boat in cape town goes wrong, um, yeah. because things went wrong the rudder yeah, broke yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. in particular but um and then on the way to australia a load more things went wrong the engine the electric you know all sorts of things yeah after after australia by then we really sorted the boat out then in you know in well, it was new zealand it was an auckland stop i had not a single thing went wrong with that boat all the way from new zealand <laughs> to the finish in charleston okay. so yeah, good. you know but oh, by well. then I was out of the race because I'd fallen behind. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Jean-Luc is eating his escargot on crackers oh. <laughs> and listening to cassette music. Jean-Luc All right. Jean -Luc That's is great, laughing. Robin. He's yeah. in great shape. <laughs> good, yeah. good to catch up. And we'll, because uh, uh, we, we, you're going to be here now for like a month or so. I'm going to be here out for a while. Yeah. The new rig with yeah. the officers just over there. We'll, yeah. we'll get together and we'll uh, we'll bring Robin in on some of the commentaries on the race, you know, because he's got interesting opinions as well. Sometimes different than mine. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Uh, Christoph will be doing things. Uh, we might even throw Jane Jane in on a uh, commentary one day. You want to do a commentary, Jane Jane? 
Jane? No. Nope. Why not? <laughs> okay, we'll sign off and uh, thanks for that. We'll um, we're pushing the wrong buttons here, so um, we'll catch you again uh, tomorrow. And the launch of the 2022 is happening on the 22nd, so stand by. Thanks. <laughs>